Hey, so it is that time of the week again. Um, I really wish I could do this in the morning at the beginning of the week, but once again, um, we really need to gear up for this and we need to get ready for this week because there is stuff happening on Monday. There is stuff that we are looking at um, because once again, um, our legislators are, I, I mean, I whatever. Anyway, the fight continues. So. Um, so one of the issues, so I just got back from, from Boise. I went to Boise for um, some Democrat stuff for our state central committee meeting for the Frank Church Banquet. It was actually really great, uh, but it also gave me some really depressing insights. So we got, we got some information on the ground. Um, let's be honest, Friday night after, after the uh, legislators go, after the press goes home, Friday night is one of the most disappointing things ever because basically we get to see, um, you know, the depredations that await us for the week ahead. So we are still working with a bunch of stuff. So this has actually been a very frustrating um, legislative session. I've mentioned this before. Um, this is a legislative session in which our legislators are actively hostile toward us. So a lot of the people who claim to represent us are being actively hostile toward us and they are refusing to protect us so we know a couple weeks ago um we know we know a couple weeks ago that uh we couldn't even get um our house to pass a bill getting rid of child marriage in idaho so we can't even get our representatives to protect children so we can't get them to protect children so i don't know why we think that they're going to actually protect us in any way shape or form because they're not protecting children um, as usual, uh, 14 years running, um, they have refused to protect our citizens, our LGBTQ plus citizens. They have not been protected either. Um, they still are subject to um, horrible uh, discrimination with not just public uh, accommodations, but with employment and housing and other issues. So we've got a whole population here in Idaho that is still being actively discriminated against and that people are refusing to protect. So we have this issue where, um, where we've got legislators refusing to actually protect us and they're not even listening to us and now they are actively hostile toward us so this is the progression that we have been seeing with this legislative session and here we go round and round we go um, it's very exhausting to have to keep doing the same thing again but here we are and this is the thing our representatives our leaders are actually hoping that we will get tired and that we will give up and so we can't so let's see what we've got on the docket this week for the most part um, it's stuff that we've talked about before, but it's still very important and it's stuff that we need to pay attention to. So first of all, after hearing a bunch of testimony against Senate Bill 1159, and that is Senator Scott Groh's um, horrible initiative uh, bill, after hearing a bunch of testimony against that, the Senate Affairs Committee um, decided not to vote on it Friday because they're cowards. And they ended up saying that they were going to vote on it sometime this week. So um, Senator Lodge, or Lodge, or however you pronounce it, is a, is a, is a complete coward. Uh, after listening to hours of testimony against Senate Bill 1159, they decided to not take a vote on it in committee that day in front of everybody and decided to hold it until this week. Now, the assumption is, is that this week, this bill is going to the Senate. So this is something that you need to do is contact your senators. So uh, the contact information will be later on down in the description as always. So make sure you are contacting your senators. So uh, also something, another little tidbit here in the description, if you want to take a look at it, uh, Senator Groh might have had help from a payday lending lobbyist to write this travesty of a bill. So um, not only did he maybe it's bad enough if he comes up with it on his own. What's even worse is that a payday lender practically wrote it for him, if, you know, this is true. So go ahead, read the story. Um, this bill, this travesty of a bill, might actually be coming from a lobbyist 
uh, for a payday lender. So that's super awesome. Uh, good job, guys. Uh, we'll let lobbyists, and that was the thing, right, on this bill. Uh, lobbyists got to testify before Idaho citizens, and now we find out that it's even lobbyists for payday lending companies, and these are the most... Uh, you know, some of the most predatory, uh, predatory uh, products out there uh, are actually writing our bills for us. So that's awesome. Thanks, Idaho. Thanks, representatives. Thanks, uh, leaders, uh, for, for doing that. That's super awesome. So, uh, so that's, that's something to keep in mind. Now, of course, uh, we're coming back to Medicaid expansion. They keep trying to sabotage it. Uh, the last bill that Van Der Wouda put forward, he ended up withdrawing because of the intense outcry against it. So now he is ready to introduce something else that was even more restrictive. Now, while I was in Boise over the weekend, there were... Um, there were rumors that our very own Brian Zollinger was going to put forth his own bill, um, but those have subsided a little bit in favor of this Van Der Wouda thing. Now, last time Brian Zollinger was supposedly, last time Representative um, Representative Zollinger was going to set forth a, a bill um, about Medicaid expansion restrictions, he ended up not doing it because Van Der Wouda did it instead. So it looks like he is still hiding behind Van Der Wouda, um, but that hasn't stopped him from taking his PAC money. Hurrah! So he's got PAC money from Florida coming in to help him fight the good fight against the people of Idaho. So that's great. Um, so check that out. Um, so our representatives are working against us. This even more restrictive bill by Van Der Wouda is reportedly also going to kick in some Planned Parenthood stuff. So basically um, what they're doing is um, we can't, they can't get the bill to get citizen support without making up a crisis, fake emergency, here we go. So uh, they're adding extra restrictions, they're pulling in stuff that has nothing to do with this, and just really trying to uh, ram it through over the objections of the citizens. Uh, oh. So anyway, this is passed, this is law, according to the Idaho Constitution, and, uh, and now they're trying to sabotage it. This is what this is, okay? This is sabotage. They are purposely trying to make this fail. So this is their plan. This is this is the strategy here. It is, okay, so um, we go ahead and we do all these work requirements or these other requirements or these sidecars or this funding this or funding that, whatever it is they're deciding on. So they take that and they say, we're going to add all this to the bill and then it's going to fail and it's not going to work like it should, and then we're going to point to it and say, see, you guys are stupid, and it failed. That is their strategy. Okay, this is Gaslighting 101. Our state legislators are going to, they're, they're planning on gaslighting us. They're planning on putting a bunch of restrictions on this, sabotaging it so it fails, and then telling us it's our fault and that we are the ones to blame for it. This is what they're going to do. This is Gaslighting 101. That's, that's what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, your District 33 representatives. Yay. All right, so um, if you wanna do something about this, you can join Luke Mayville and Ashley Prince. They're gonna come into town tomorrow, Monday 18th. So they're coming on Monday 18th. They're gonna door knock in a couple of precincts. You can meet at the villa in the afternoon. There is some information there, the Facebook event. They're coming in with Reclaim Idaho. We got a door knock again. Like the sheer amount of door knocking that we have done, the sheer number of miles and thousands of doors we have door knocked on for this situation is insane and the fact that we have to keep doing it even after we pass this legislation is ridiculous but here we are this is the world we live in and whatever so uh get out there if you have some time on monday afternoon um head on out uh, join luke and ashley um i'm super excited to see them they they stay at my house so it's awesome but um i'm super excited to see them i'm super excited they're coming back to idaho falls and um, they'll also be in pocatello on Wednesday. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Check the Reclaim Idaho page to um, see what events are happening in your area. Now next, here is something interesting. Uh, fresh from the rumor mill. So exciting. So um, before before getting word about this potential Vanderwuda new restriction thing, um, 
the rumor going around on Friday night was that the um, leadership in the House and in the Senate um, were, have, have come to an arrangement. Now, I don't know how this is going to survive if Van Der bill actually makes it out of the Health and Welfare Committee, but this is just something to keep in mind and something to kind of look for and pay attention to in the coming weeks to see if this is a rumor that is actually borne out or not. So you can see the Twitter, um, uh, Representative Alana Rubel, a great fighter, great out there, actually fighting on behalf of her constituents and putting out, you know, bills that actually help people. Uh, she's out there fighting the good fight, um, but she uh, posted a status that pointed out that it appears that the leadership in the House and the Senate could be working together on a deal for Medicaid expansion. So the Senate, good for them. Yay, Senate passed an appropriations bill that included full, clean funding for Medicaid expansion. So good for the Senate on that. That's awesome. Uh, but the House, of course, has just been holding this bill, holding this bill, holding this bill, making it hostage, um, entertaining all of these stupid hearings and all of these stupid bills with uh, with the side the sidecars and the restrictions and the stupidity. So. Um, the, the arrangement that we want to watch out for is that the Senate goes ahead and passes this horrible SB 159, 1159, this SB 1159, about um, changing the way we get initiatives onto the ballot, change that, the, the Senate passes that, and the House, in response, goes ahead, passes clean Medicaid expansion, but we're screwed nine ways from Sunday anyway. So the bottom line here is these people have been incompetent for six years. They were incompetent, they did not do their job, and they did not address an actual crisis brewing in Idaho related to affordable health care. They did none of that. So we used our constitutional rights as Idahoans, using the Idaho Constitution, with one of the most restrictive ballot initiative requirements in the country. So Idaho already has some of the most restrictive ballot initiative requirements in the country. That's right now. That's what we overcame to pass Medicaid expansion. We overcame that shit to pass Medicaid expansion. And now they're saying, well, okay, fine, we'll give you this, but we're gonna pass these even more restrictive uh, ballot initiative requirements to make it practically impossible for you to address our incompetence. I mean, that's the point, right? Uh, they don't want us actually holding them accountable or addressing their incompetence in any way, shape, or form. Uh, instead, they're just going to restrict us and muzzle us and tell us to sit down and shut up. And this is total bullshit. So anyway, check that out. Be watching for that. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on the situation, see how this rumor shakes out, see if it's the thing. Meanwhile, contact your reps, your representatives, contact the members of the House, contact the members of the Senate, contact them all, just do it, make it clear that all of this shit is totally unacceptable. It is, okay? They are messing us over completely. So make it clear it's unacceptable. We've got their contact information there. Um, just for extra fun, we've got the members of the Senate Affairs Committee, we've got their email addresses. Go ahead, give them an email, tell them SB 1159 is unacceptable and they should not pass it out of committee, no matter what backroom deals they're making regarding Medicaid expansion and make sure that you contact the members of Health, of health and Welfare, tell them no sidecars, clean expansion, full stop. No sidecars, clean expansion, full stop. Whatever it is that they are putting out there with the restrictions, whatever it is that Van Der Wouda and Zondra's hiding behind him, but whatever it is that Van Der Wouda is doing, no, just no, no sidecars, no restrictions. So, um, and then finally, um, central committee meeting on Tuesday the 19th. So if you're sick of this bullshit, 
come help us make a difference. We'll be 7 p.m. at the library. <laughs> We're there every third Tuesday. Um, join a committee. Help us with town halls. So we want to be able to do issues town halls so we can talk to people about these issues and talk to people about what matters to them and find out from them what matters to them, whether it's education, whether it's health care, whether it's public lands. All of those things are important to Idahoans. And there are lots of other issues as well. But we can't get out there and we can't do these programs and we can't plan them and execute them without your help. We cannot do this unless you are involved. And so if you want to be involved, if you want to help out, join us at the Central Committee meeting on Tuesday the 19th. Sign up for a committee. Sign up to help us plan events. Sign up to help us with um, our media and our message. Sign up to help us with all of these things um, so that we can get the word out, so that we can move forward, and so that we can fight. We shouldn't have to fight, but we are going to have to fight because this is the most hostile, actively hostile legislative session we have ever seen. And until we are out there working and holding them accountable in the voting booth and in, you know, and every day in the email, on the Twitter, and by making phone calls, wherever it is, and the, until we are out there holding them accountable every day for the harm that they are actively inflicting on their constituents, we will not see a change. So come out, join us, and help us make a difference.